Hello students, welcome to Legacy IIS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about the Karnataka government's decision to introduce egg in the midday meals for the school children. We are going to discuss slightly about what are what is the midday meal scheme and also we are going to discuss that what are the rationale behind which the Karnataka and before that other state governments have decided to introduce eggs as a supplementary diet in the midday meal of the school children. So let us go and start about this particular topic. So first of all the context in which we are discussing this particular issue is because the Karnataka is deciding or Karnataka government is planning to introduce eggs under the midday meal scheme from the next academic session. If this becomes true then Karnataka will become the 13th state of India to have introduced eggs in the midday meal scheme. It is midday meal scheme if you look at briefly it is believed to be the largest initiative in the world to enhance nutritional levels of school going children through providing them with the hot cooked meal. Not only it also not only it only aims at improving the nutrition level but also it uh, aims at arresting the school dropout rate and also encourages parents to send their children to the school at least up to the age of 14 years. However, if you look at the proposal of introduction of eggs in the school, the proposal is facing severe opposition from opposition party members as well as some religious organizations sects as well and however it still uh, is awaiting this proposal still is awaiting the Karnataka government's final stamp of approval. Now why Karnataka wanted to want to introduce eggs in the midday meal scheme this can be understood from the survey report that was conducted by national family health survey number 5 and as per the national family health survey it was found that around 35 percent of children under 5 years of age are stunted in Karnataka and around 20% of children are wasted in Karnataka. Not only that, we also, our National Family Health Survey have also found a very high prevalence rate of malnutrition among the children below 14 years of age. Apart from that, they are also suffering from severe, uh, several defic deficiency diseases as well as they have low immunity. So it is in this context the introduction of egg that is very uh, having very high nutrition is supposed to be a good step to improve the health status and nutritional status of children. Now if you look at the background of midday meal scheme so this scheme is a very old scheme the first time when we can trace the origin of this scheme is in year 1920 that is in pre-independence India when Madras municipal, municipal corporation used to run similar scheme for the school going children. Then after independence in the year 1926, Tamil Nadu again became a pioneer state and under the chief ministership of K. Kamraj who was the political stalwart and a very famous leader of uh, Congress party rolled out a school feeding scheme. Thus after independence we can understand that Tamil Nadu was the first state where a scheme like midday meal scheme was introduced. Further in uh, five years later in the year 1961, Kerala actually introduced a scheme which was then not run by the state government but the midday meals were provided by humanitarian agencies in the state and schools of Kerala. However, this changed in the December 1st 1984 under the chief ministership of Karunakaran when the state government officially took over the initiative and started providing the midday meals to the school going children. Further, the most significant out uh, after this uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, several other states also followed the suit and introduced similar programs in their school. However, in year 1995, this program was introduced in a large part of India to be exact about 2408 blocks for all those students up to class 5. It was introduced as a centrally sponsored scheme by the central government. And again, the most important changes happened in year 2007 when under the Prime Ministership of Dr. Manmohan Singh in the UPA government regime, the midday meal was which was earlier restricted up to class 5 was expanded to introduce all the students up to class 8. So that is overall a brief background of midday meal scheme. Now what about the extent of the scheme? That means how far the coverage of the scheme go? This we can understand from the recent survey that has been conducted. It is believed that about in the India 11.8 crore children are there in the classes between 1 to 8 in the age group of 6 to 14 that are spread over 11.2 lakh government and government aided schools. Not only that even we can, we can include schools that are run by local bodies such as municipal corporations in Delhi and under the provisions of National Family Food Security Act 2013 
almost 12 crore children we can say are largely deriving benefit of enhanced nutrition and availability of food through this midday meal scheme of the government as per the recent budget passed for year 2022-2023 by the central government they have earmarked a total fund of 10233 crores for the scheme and at the same time states are expected to spend almost half of this that is almost 6277 crores so overall the net outlay for this scheme combining the outlay from central and state government will be somewhere about 16000 crores so that is a very hefty sum for the midday meal scheme now we have to understand that midday meal is not just a, uh, some simple scheme it is also a kind of legal entitlement the availability of midday meals availability of food in the school is a best example of legal entitlement legal rights that has been provided to the school going children of both primary and upper primary level by two different mechanisms first this legal entitlement has been ensured by the passes of national food security act 2013 and at the same time before after that before that in year 2001 when a case went into the supreme court there is uh, the uh, pucl versus union of india and others and here also supreme court has directed that the all the school going children between 6 to 14 years of age need to be provided with the midday meals by either state government or the central government so these are the two benchmark these are the two landmark decisions that have provided mid day meals or that has given mid day meals a kind of legal entitlement for the school going children now what are the food that is introduced under mid day meal scheme so we do not have any single variety or single menu of food that is uh, used by all the states it varies from state to state union territory to union territory however certain things that has to be kept in mind by the officials that for the primary grades whatever foods they are including in the meals or whatever the menu there is they should the menu should at least give 450 calories with 12 gram of proteins that means the simple menus like rice pulses vegetables oil and fat that has been introduced in the midday meals should provide 450 calories as well as 12 gram protein for primary grade children however for the upper primary children the whatever menu is decided by the official should ensure availability of 700 calories and 20 grams of proteins so once these demands are met then the states and union territories are free to use whatever food they want or order whatever food they have uh, they have availability to to be introduced in the mid day meals apart from that if additional items can also be provided as a supplementary nutrition but for these additional items whatever expenses are there that are borne by the state government alone for example the prov provision of milks eggs chikki or fruits that has been uh, done by several state these all expenditure is made by the fund of state government so if you look about the variation in mds composition especially with respect to the eggs since eggs are the one that is controversial uh, food that is uh, introduced by several state so as of now as per the parliamentary committee report or as per the uh, this um, uh, data given by the minister uh, ministers in parliament around 13 states are there in india which are currently using eggs in their mid day meal schemes however the use of eggs are not uh, continue or use of eggs are not uniform in all the states so broadly if you look at this the tamil nadu is the one state that provides eggs to the uh, mid day, uh, eggs in the mid day meal in all the school days of work then after that we have the state of andhra pradesh which provide eggs 5 days a week after that we have telangana which provided eggs 3 days a week then after we have odisha jharkhand then we have uh, this uh, andaman and nicobar these states and union territories union territories provide eggs two times a week and then we have states like bihar west bengal assam then we have uh, manipur mizoram and uttarakhand these state provide eggs to the school children once a week and then we have the state of sikkim that provide eggs to the school children once a month so that is how we can see variation is there depending from the states states and all of the states that you are seeing here in the green color these are the state that had not introduced eggs in their mid day meal scheme apart from that some other state also provide additional or uh, additional supplement for example if you look at the example of west bengal they also have introduced cheese and mushroom in the mid day meal diet and if you look at the states of maharashtra and uh, andhra pradesh they have introduced chikki as a additional supplement in the mid day meal schemes so these are the same thing that we written here that for example egg banana chikki 
and that, for example, other states that have introduced additional supplement is example Punjab that produce uh, that provides sweet kheer. Then some Rajasthan is there that produ uh, provides seasonal fruit and hot milk. Uttarakhand also provides fruit and milk and laddu and all this kind of things. So depending on the state government, we have lot of variation apart from the, the normal menu like rice, uh, pulses, wheat, uh, rotis and all these things that are fixed. Now obviously the question comes that why only 13 states have introduced eggs and also not in all days of weeks in the midday meals. So several reasons are there. The first reason that is given by Arunachal Pradesh is the cost factor. Arunachal Pradesh government says that if you introduce eggs, the cost will rise up uh, very uh, cost will rise up substantially and the state government will have problem in arranging for that. However, the main reasons why states are shying from adopting egg in the midday meal is because of the diversity of India. We have large scale regional diversity, religional, religious diversity, ethnic diversity, as well as cultural diversity. Due to this, for example, if you look at the religious regions in the state of Karnataka itself, we have the opposition from the Lingayat and Jain seats against the introduction of eggs in the midday meal schools. For example, if you look at the Madhya Pradesh, so because of these differences, it also gives rise to political uh, uh, differences and a political opposition. For example, when the state government in Madhya Pradesh wanted to introduce eggs as the midday meal, then it was vociferously opposed by the opposition party. And when Congress ruled Madhya Pradesh introduced eggs in midday meal, and when the BJP government came in power back in power in 2020, they removed eggs from the midday meal. So it is due to this reason we can understand that X has become a kind of political issue as well as far as their introduction in midday meals are concerned. Now coming to the last point that how the midday meal scheme is run, what is the share and responsibility of state government and what is the share and responsibility of central government. So as per the current estimate it is believed that on the midday meal scheme, generally the expenditure is of rupees 4.97 per child per day for primary level and rupees 7.45 per children per day for the upper primary level. So this whole uh, this amount is shared between a state and central government in different different ways. For the states and unit territories having a legislative assembly, the central and state government share is respectively 60 is to 40. That means 60% of cost is borne by central government, 40% cost is borne by the state government. But for the states like northeastern states and the Himalayan states like Jammu Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand, the state share becomes lesser to just 10% while 90% of cost is borne by the central government. While those union territories that do not have a state legislature, for them the 100% of the cost for midday meal scheme is borne by the central government. This cost is similar for the payment to the cooks and worker. Here also the sharing of amount is on the same way how the sharing on the food item is concerned. However, one thing we have to keep in mind, the states and unit readies that supplement the meals with additional item as we discussed before such as milks, eggs or fruits, they contribute more because the state central government cannot spend money for these supplemental food materials. However, central bears the entire cost of food grains and their transportation and also handles the expenditure on management, monitoring and evaluation of the scheme. So that is all about the midday meal scheme and the introduction of X. In uh, We have to see that how the Karnataka state government or what Karnataka state government finally decides regarding the introduction of X in the midday meal scheme. That is all for today. Thank you very much.